Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. So if you guys are new here, my name is Marissa and I am on a mission to make flipping furniture my main hustle. And in today's episode, we are gonna be flipping this dresser into this dresser. If you guys haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and do all those things and check out my other videos. I have a lot more on my channel if you guys are interested in learning how to do your own, teaching you guys how to flip your own furniture and how to make a profit off of it. I've only been doing it for about two months and I've already made almost $3,000 just by flipping furniture and I'm not professional. I don't know what I'm doing. So if you guys want to learn how to not know what you're doing and make money off of it, subscribe, like, comment. But without further ado, let's get flipping. So my first step with any piece is to make sure I go over the entirety of the piece and just kind of see what repairs I need to do, what scratches need to be taken off, what chips need to be filled in with some wood filler and all that good stuff. So as you see, the piece is pretty dinged up, but the scratches and chips are very, very minor. And the next step is to remove the hardware, and I actually like to keep these in a separate container. That way I can make sure that I don't lose them, and to make sure that all the screws and all the hardware stays together in one place. You never know what you're gonna find behind these drawers. This one was a little interesting. I couldn't even really identify some of the things that I found in here. A uh, lot of screws, a lot of change, but also a bone. No idea what kind of bone that is, and I definitely made sure to wash my hands afterwards, but yeah, just a bone. So in a couple of my other videos, I've questioned why we clean before sanding, considering that you take off the top layer of the dirt anyways. But my boy Mark in the comment section of one of my other videos informed me that the reason why we clean before we sand is to make sure that the sander doesn't embed any of the oil or greasiness or whatever dirt is on the surface into the wood before we stain because then we might get splotchy and uneven staining. So thanks Mark for the tip. So after letting the wood filler dry, I went in with an 80 grit sandpaper and I actually recently learned that the slower you go with the less pressure, the less squiggly little scratches you'll get from the sander itself. So I made sure to go pretty slow and then once I did all of these with the 80 grit, I made sure to move up to 120 grit and then up to a 220 grit. Also a little tip for you to use when you are switching between grits, I would recommend going in with a pencil and actually just marking up the surfaces of your piece. That way you're making sure you're taking a good layer off of the top surface and to make sure that your sandpaper is actually, you know, doing its job and you just want to sand until all of the pencil is removed. Once you're done sanding, it is a good idea to go in there and wipe off any of the excess dust that was kicked up by the sander. I've heard that tack cloth works best for this, but I use a microfiber cloth. And then for the stain, I'm using a mahogany colored gel stain. So 
So if you guys haven't checked out my last attempt at using gel stain, I highly recommend checking that video out. I'll include that link here. But last time I really caked on the gel stain and I think I put it on a little too thick. So this time around, I made sure to put on really thin layers and wipe it off immediately. And I really liked the results of that. To clean the hardware, we're going to use a half white vinegar, half hot water bath, and we're just going to soak the uh, hardware in there and just let all of the vinegar do its job with all the gunk and stuff that's on there. So here is what they look like before, and when I take them out, I make sure to go over them with a really, really, really fine steel wool, and I just went in there and got all of the little crevices and scraped all of the gunk off and here is before and after with the after on the left. For sanding the rest of the piece I did the same thing that I did with the drawers and I made sure to go in with an 80 grit sandpaper then a 120 then a 220. For the top of it I knew that I was just gonna go with all black so I just did a scuff sand all over the place didn't really worry about getting through that top layer of uh, veneer and just scuffed it down. So I went ahead with a damp cloth and wiped down the whole piece to make sure I got all of the sawdust off before I went in with my stain. And for the sides of this piece, I am going to be putting a design on there, so I did have to go in with a base layer of stain so that when I taped over it, the stain would show through the paint. But the wood on the side ended up taking the stain a little differently than they did on the drawers. It turned out a little bit more purple, so I went ahead and sanded down the areas that I was going to be taping where that stain was going to be showing through and um, just tried a different method. I went in there with a uh, different color stain just to try to warm it up and get it less purple and a little bit more brown. Then I put the oil stain back on top of that and that actually seems to work pretty well. And this method actually worked pretty dang well. The insides of the drawers were pretty scratched up, so I actually decided that I was going to go in there and sand them down and then give them a nice stained finish. So to tape the sides of the piece, I started out with one side and taped down one side first and then measured the distance between the top of the drawer and where my tape met the edge. That way I could guarantee that they would be kind of the same, more or less. <laughs> For paint, I decided to go with a Rust-Oleum Black, and it's a quick dry latex paint. And I didn't put a primer on this one because I was going to be doing that design. I didn't want to have to put the design on, then paint with primer, then wait for that to dry, then paint with the paint over that. Because then if I went to remove the tape, the tape would actually take up a lot of the paint, and I didn't want to risk having that pattern messed up. So if anybody has any tips on how to apply primer 
when you're doing a taped design. I would love to hear it. Let me know in the comments. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find any uh, primer, paint and primer type of mix in black. But if you can find a paint and primer mix in your color, I would definitely recommend doing that instead. And before I peeled off the paint, I made sure to do two coats of the paint, kind of one right after the other since this is a quick drying paint. So there were a couple of places where the tape peeled up some paint, so I went in there with a sponge brush and just did a couple little touch-ups here and there. For the top coat on the drawers, I use a wipe on poly. I don't know why I prefer this, but I really do. I think it makes the drawers look very, very pretty. And then for the sides and the rest of the body of the piece, I went in with just a regular poly top coat in a semi gloss. Guys, I am so happy with how this thing turned out. It looks so good. I actually definitely want to make a similar piece for my own home because I think it looked so, so cool. So let's talk numbers, guys. I bought this piece off of Facebook Marketplace for $75 and then all I had to do was buy the paint for it. Essentially, I had everything else and I wasn't gonna buy new hardware for this so I kept the original hardware and as you saw I just restored it. So all in all I spent 75 on the piece and $10 on the paint. So that's a grand total of $85. So I'm actually gonna be listing it on Facebook Marketplace for $4.85 and uh, yeah we'll see if anybody picks up on it. I actually just posted it about 30 minutes ago, so we shall see. If you guys want to stay tuned and see if something has sold, if it hasn't sold by the time I post this video, I will update the sold price in the description below. And then I also have a highlight story on my Instagram telling you guys when I've sold a piece, how much I've sold it for, how much I spent on it, how much I profited. And if you guys want to check that out, here is the handle for my Instagram. If you guys do want to follow me on social media, I post highlights, I post behind the scenes, I post polls where you guys can kind of have a say in what I do with the piece. This piece, you guys wanted me to paint it, so I went ahead and painted it. It was between painting or simply restoring, and you guys voted painted, so thank you so much for voting. I hope you guys liked the way that it turned out. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Safe flipping, guys. Mm.